everyone. Welcome to Bread and Roses. I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Borspuya. In this week's program, we're going to be talking about the great truck drivers, national strike in Iran, the threats of the regime hasn't stopped them, and they're fighting for basic rights for themselves and Iranian society. Great strike, and we need to support it. Interview this week is with uh, Ibrahim Abdullah, the founder of Muslimish in United States. Our insane fatwa is about Friday uh, prayers and how you need to go to them, otherwise they're going to demolish the house over your head. Mm. And the slice of life is about free women writers in Afghanistan and their fight for women's voices to be heard and for an end to discrimination in that society. Stay with us. Don't go away. Truckers and truck drivers in Iran are on national strike and this strike has been going on for a few days. It's a continuation of previous strikes where demands were not met and it has now extended to over 280 cities. Absolutely and it's magnificent. Other people are joining them and, and, and expressing the solidarity but the key demands of the um, uh, strikers and tr um, uh, drivers are uh, revision of the, uh, the, uh, the wages and the income which falls below uh, uh, poverty line in Iran. These are hard working people. The whole of the Iranian economy uh, dependent on the movement of goods across the country and the situation is really really bad. They, the amount of money that they've, they've given for, uh, for transportation is it, compared to the cost of replacement, maintenance, gasoline and, and other expenditure it's just they, they're left with nothing and this is the third round of strikes mm. uh, in, in the last 12 months they've, uh, they've, they've had and their demands is met with complete silence and lies and promises that has never been uh, uh, fulfilled. And this is within a context where the Iranian currency has lost its value significantly. So, you know, prices are skyrocketing. Things are becoming four, five, sixfold uh, in a matter of weeks and days, whilst wages remain under the poverty line. So this is a problem not just for the truck drivers, but for the wider society as well. Yeah, and examples of many examples that drivers are driving because they have to sort of have income. They're driving on... Uh, with half-torn tires and they can't and they're risking their lives and there's so many accidents taking place because they can't afford to replace the tires for example or maintain the, uh, the cars uh, and the trucks and uh, added to that the, the, the bribery of the distribution of loads at the uh, um, uh, loading bays in different cities it's it's crazy and the slummies and the you know all you know, the institution of Islamic government have control of that the distribution of tires and sort of replacement uh, and repairs is at the, ha at the at the hand of the Islamic sort of institutions and they are driving people's life to such level they're just impossible to survive and they find them all the time they they, they don't have any uh, um, uh, safe uh, um, tires for example and they get stopped and find and find and, and find all the time so they, they've had it they, they've had it up to here this is three rounds they've, they've, they've tried and they've now gone on national strike which to some extent is a bit sad to see people sort of have to respond uh, to this situation but the same shot shows that the only way to confront the Islamic regime is by mass national strike mm. to push them away and, and Im impose the demands on the on the government. And it's hugely important, obviously, because it is a national strike and it follows a national strike in Kurdistan uh, over the execution of three young, wonderful young men. Um, but also, you know, you've got other sections of the society and the working class showing their support and solidarity, including the teachers, for example, uh, as well as a retired group and other uh, various uh, workplace uh, um, unions and, and of, the, of the sort. And of course, you know, this is within a context, don't forget, where striking is considered haram mm -hmm. or uh, 
religiously impermissible by the government, where, for example, uh, the right to association is not uh, a basic right for workers, where labor leaders are often arrested, imprisoned, tortured, even flogged. And we see as a result of this strike, you've got 150 um, truck drivers who've been arrested. Uh, and also, the government has threatened uh, some with execution even, mm -hmm. saying that, you know, they shouldn't be striking. So within this context, this national strike is of immense importance. Yeah, absolutely. The judiciary uh, um, and uh, I think prosecution office, the Islamic regime is threatened and they use the Islamic law to say anybody who makes the uh, um, uh, network of roads insecure within the Islamic law, the, uh, the punishment is death and, uh, and execution and actually threatened to kill and execute. Uh, uh, striking truck, truck drivers who try to uh, prevent movement of trucks and loading uh, at the loading bays. And the response to this has been uh, outraged within Iranian society and everybody is trying to support him. The demands of the truck drivers, it, there is a huge link between their strike and the demands of the rest of the Iranian society and other industries in Iran. And of course there's been some great support internationally as well, the Teamsters, the um, uh, truck work uh, drivers in the Netherlands for example, uh, there have been support internationally and of course we need to keep the support, increase it, uh, you know, the truck drivers have to have unconditional support uh, in Iran, outside Iran and also we have to demand unequivocally that those who have been arrested be released and their demands be met. Yeah, I should add that the International Federation of uh, uh, Transport Unions, Transport Workers Unions have expressed solidarity with the truck drivers in Iran, but that needs to be extended. Other uh, um, trade unions internationally, they need to put pressure on the Islamic regime of Iran to recognize the rights uh, of the uh, uh, drivers and the rest of the Iranian uh, society because Islam and the Islamic government in Iran is life on the poverty line and imprisonment and execution. That's the reality of uh, and, and the meaning of a, a religious Islamic government in Iran. Now, of course, Ayatollah Khamenei, as usual, has blamed foreign enemies for the strike and for what's happened. We know very clearly that the main enemy of the Iranian people is the regime itself. And, of course, you have others here uh, who are concerned rightly about uh, U.S. militarism and uh, intervention and its economic sanctions, which are hurting the people of Iran as well. Uh, but nonetheless, they're trying to protect the Iranian regime by saying these are just normal economic strikes that take place in every country and they're, they're not political, they're not against the regime. Mm -hmm. But clearly we know, if anyone has any understanding of the society in Iran, we know very clearly that, uh, you know, uh, Economic demands are very much linked to political demands and uh, very often we see that these slogans develop into anti-regime slogans. Absolutely. The, the condition of the working class in Iran and the economic condition of the working class in Iran, working people in Iran, is because of the Islamic regime and its capitalist and neoliberal policies, but is, is you know, intertwined with the Islamic regime of Iran and the, and the religious laws. This is, is made life impossible for, uh, for people of Iran. So is, you just uh, um, state that is, is economic situation, so economy needs to be resolved and the Islamic regime has, you know, could remain, it's a foolish uh, uh, and, assessment. And where do uh, workers and labor leaders get flogged? Where do they get executed, you know, if you're, you're comparing it with normal working uh, class sort of uh, protests? Uh, it, it's very clear that there's huge oppression and defending the regime is something that is abhorrent, as is defending U.S. militarism uh, or the economic sanctions. I think there is another way, a third way, which is defending the working class in Iran, defending the people of Iran, uh, you know, and not either the Iranian regime or uh, U.S.-led uh, militarism. Those are not the solutions. These protests in Iran, on the back of the working class, are the real solution for change in society in Iran. And anyone who has concern for people in Iran need to support these protests. As we said earlier, the tactic of the Islamic regime has been to threaten them, the, the, to imprison over 150 truck drivers. Its organizers been, uh, have been arrested, uh, and one of the demands of the truck drivers is the uh, um, uh, colleagues and uh, friends to be freed, and we need to 
uh, uh, support that demand that the these are political prisoners they must be freed along with other political prisoners in Iran uh, we must support the truck drivers the strike and we urge all our viewers and our friends everywhere to uh, organize uh, solidarity with the truck drivers in Iran that's the best thing you could do for people of Iran and Middle East so, so show your solidarity long live the strike of the truck drivers in Iran Ibrahim Abdullah, it's a wonderful pleasure to have you on our program. I wanted to speak to you first about the latest Muslimish conference where you presented some of your artwork. Can you tell us a bit about that artwork? Yes, I, uh, this, in this, this year's conference I, we, uh, I presented three pieces. One was uh, related to Islam, one was related to Christianity, and one is like science themed. The first one, I changed the verse, the first verse of the Quran, uh, read by the name of your Lord that created, created men from semen. I changed it to write by the name of your mind that created, created idols from paper, uh, which, you know, which, you know, I, I like that piece. It's a beautiful piece. And the piece of wood that I did it on was beautiful too. Uh, the second one, I put all the verses of the, of the New Testament that I thought were wrong and are just, just disgusting because, you know, I hear a lot that people defend Christianity, say like, well, Islam is violent, but Christianity is peaceful. And like, you know, no, the Old Testament is violent, but the New Testament is peaceful. So here, this is like really bad stuff. It's in the New Testament. You, so I wanted to make sure that that's there. And then uh, the third piece I really brought up because it's for a friend. She's going to take it for Iman. Uh, it's got chemistry. It's like it's like the periodic table, and I put it the the different and carbon. I made like roots coming out of it. Like it, like it's fun. I, I like working with wood. Uh, it really the inspiration for that really came from Islam also because when I first argued with my friends after you know telling them that I don't believe in the things in Islam, uh, one of the things that I mentioned and, and is that uh, there's a hadith that says before the end of the day the tree is gonna talk. And it's going to tell Muslims where the Jews are so they can kill them. And that part really, like, I mean, when I, was, when I really believed, I didn't, I, I heard it and I didn't, like, stop me. I, I kept going. But now, like, w once I had started questioning, that, that really pissed me off. Like, like, really? You think a tree is going to talk? And if the tree talks, it's going to tell you to kill someone? Like, like it's a tree. Like, you think the tree is going to tell you to kill someone? Like, so, like, so, like, when I first started working with wood, uh, it was, that was my inspiration. Like, like, let me show you what the tree will say. The tree will not gonna, it's not gonna tell you to kill someone. Trees, you know. So yeah, that was. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah. And so one of the discussions at this uh, conference, um, it was about the importance of art. Yes. And it's, a, its impact on human society. Can you talk a bit about that? And also in criticizing things that are inhuman or taboo. Yes. Well, uh, it really like the whole idea of like having an, a conference that, that is about advancing the sciences and cultivating the arts, that was Jinan's idea and, and she always comes up with the best ideas for these things because we, we're, we, we don't want to be just about what we're rejecting or what we're against. We want to be about what we're for, we want to just build a different model, like start a different and, and, and most of our, 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 uh, our ethics almost comes from art and, 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 and um, it, it replaces the role that dogma used to like play in our lives and we need to cultivate that we need to encourage that for people because it it really like it completes the human character in a way uh, and that's why we wanted to like focus on art and and, and most of our members here they like they have an artistic side like I'm, I don't consider myself an artist but you know I, I, I uh, I just like to like like draw on wood I like to like write things on wood and and, and but and and it's really because the, already the piece of wood that I'm picking is already beautiful without me touching it. So it's about appreciation for the art, like having something else that to, to, to uh, draw beauty from and, and, and get these nice feelings that we used to get from religion from. 
And uh, what's interesting about Muslimish is, uh, I, first of all, everybody loves the name. Yeah. You know, they think it's the greatest name ever. I really, I think too. It's just such a great name, Muslimish. Yeah, yeah. And it also could work Mish Muslim, which is not Muslim. Uh -huh. And that's why, like in our logo, the M is double. So, like that was one of those like little tricky things. Uh -huh. Beautiful. It can be Mish Muslim, which is not that's Muslim. Muslim. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so th this idea, what's the idea behind this? Because it's, it's got both ex-Muslims and Muslims yes. in it. So it's quite an interesting space to yes. be in. Yes. And, and we, well, the idea is if we really, I feel that if we want to like have real change, we need to work with Muslims. I don't think, like our numbers are really small as ex-Muslims, I think. And uh, most of us don't feel comfortable. I mean, some, we, this has been changing. We are like, more and more we're having more vocal people. That's definitely happening. But for a lot of people, they can't, they can't speak about it. They can't talk about it. They can't. Uh, so um, it's good to be able to go to a place where you can be either Muslim or not Muslim. It's safer that way. Uh, but um, also, like we, we, we want to allow a, a space for... Because when I first started, when I first had doubts, there was no place for me to go. There was no place where I can just discuss things with people. And every time I talk to someone about it, they're like, oh, no, no, it's haram. So like, there was just no place for discussion, no place where you can explore my ideas. And, 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 I, and, uh, and, and I felt like we needed that space. And, and uh, it's beautiful because, because I, I, I love it because it has made me understand a lot about the like, nuances of, of of how different people think. Some people would call themselves Muslim. They choose to call themselves Muslim. But if you really talk to them, there's a lot of things in Islam they don't agree with. But they choose to call themselves Muslim for whatever reason. I don't care what the reason is. At the end of the day, they are good people morally and they choose, they, they make the good choices. They just, they wanna, they, wanna, they wanna choose Islam because it gives them comfort in, in, in one way or another. And that's fine. As long as at the end of the day, you're not beating your wife you're not like giving your son double your daughters and you know like things like that it's like what are you doing in real life not because not just the label that you that you put on yourself what is what are your actions what are you really doing so we have as some of these muslims and these and our ex muslim members we both agree on a lot of things we definitely both agree on the necessity of free discussion and the importance of having a space for discussion and getting rid of the laws that that prohibit people from 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 exploring their ideas blasphemy laws we all muslims and ex-muslims we agree that these laws are wrong so muslims and ex-muslims we agree that women men and women are equal you know uh so we have a lot of common and we're trying to focus on what's in common so we can work together and achieve common goals. We have discussions, like you just noticed, yeah, that there is a lot of disagreement, but we, at least we're having a space where we can have this disagreement. We, at least we have a space where we can have this discussion. So even though like for, like for a lot of people it can be a little bit off-putting, but after, like, I think if you come on meeting or one or two meetings, people like start like seeing the other person's point of view and and I think we need that we need to be able to coexist we, we need to and, and we need to be able to work together because Muslims and we come from the same background we like the same food we have the same traditions we, we enjoy the same things our disagreement on the religious issues shouldn't prevent us from working towards goals we both agree on and that's what we're trying to harness is trying to harness change from Muslims and ex-Muslims working together to get common goals achieved. And uh, just as a final question, tell us a little bit about your background, um, why you started this group. Uh, I mean, you did say you had no place to discuss when you were having doubts. Yes. But um, about your doubts and why you've come where you are, why you've organized all these people together. Well, I grew up in Alexandria, Egypt. I grew up in, uh, you know, in Egypt, you have, you're either Muslim or Christian. There's no choice. Uh, it's an ID, it's an ID card. It's it's you now God lives there, kind of like like God is everywhere. Like everything you say, half the words have God in them. My name has God in it. So like like uh, after moving to the United States and you know living here for a while and having a daughter was a big factor for me having a daughter. Uh, really like the the well I just like things didn't make sense to me 
understanding evolution, living in New York City, having a membership in the Museum of Natural History, taking my kids there every other weekend. I couldn't, like, like it was, and then there was like, I think it was like about 2006, 2007, there was a the big issue about teaching evolution in schools. I was totally, against, uh, I mean, teaching intelligent design in school, and I found myself, even though I still consider myself a believer, against teaching intelligent design, because my understanding of evolution was, was and then I, and I asked myself, well, why? I should not be on that side. Technically, I should be for intelligent. Uh, design, but I'm not. I'm for evolution because I understand evolution. And once, once, um, once you understand something, you can't go back. There are certain things that, uh, and I just after a while, I spent about four years not believing, but trying to, to trying to believe, trying to keep my my belief because it was important to me. It was a big part of my character, and I didn't. It was uh, it was not the easiest process. But uh, I consider myself a pretty like, like strong person, and I and I handled it. And, I, and it, at the end of it, I just came to the realization, and I like I don't believe this. And and once I once I came to that, once I like told myself that, it became different. And 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 uh, I didn't announce it to everyone. I didn't tell my friends and tell anyone. But it just it kind of came out during an argument with my friends about inheritance laws because I live in America, and in America you have to write your will. And I told my friends when I was in Egypt visiting that, you know, I'm going to write my will and I'm going to give my son half and my daughter half. And they all attacked me. They all said there was, oh, but they're all guys. And they all, they, it's, a, it's a, anyway, they were all men. They don't want their money to be decreased. It's a really about money. And that's why it really hurt. It, it hit home for them. And, and uh, I didn't say anything when I was in Egypt. When I came back, I started writing about it on Facebook and I was attacked over and over and over. And I was you know, kind of like, just like burst out and like, well, you know, well, here's what else is wrong. You think this is wrong? Here, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. And, and, and women's testimonies have men is wrong and uh, splitting the moon is wrong and the sun setting in a, in a well of hot mud is wrong and this is all wrong. And you guys like, and, and I just went off. And, uh, and I kept doing this for about three, four years. And everybody told me, well, you're like, you think you're the only one who's right and all wrong? You're the only one. You're the only one. You think you're the only one who's right and all wrong? And I was like, yeah, I'm the only one who's right and you're all wrong. You're all wrong. I'm right. I don't care that I'm the only one. And then I met someone who, would, who thought like me by, by chance in a New York City bar, like some Pakistani guy whose name like, was Muslim. And, I, and he told me he didn't believe either. And like, we just had that best conversation. And I have a very vivid memory of that night. Uh, it was an amazing experience. It made me want to meet others. I went to the Reason Rally in D.C. I sought you out. I looked for a group for, for people, for ex-Muslims in America. There was none. So I looked and I found you. And, I, and, and you helped us uh, start and helped us with, with, with your experience and what you've been doing. So uh, it was... Uh, that's, and, and then, you know, we, and that's it. Then, you know, like the group started and, and, you know, it was... And it's taken off, hasn't it? I wouldn't know. If it, I don't want to call it taking off. I mean, it's not, it's not up to my expectations <laughs> yet. But it's, it's definitely doing good. And uh, even for me, sometimes I go to meetings where there's one person. I don't care. If that person has never met anyone, like, it's, it's a good conversation. I, this is like, they, like, these are people who are like, think they're completely alone. They've never met anyone before who thought like them. And they, they are right. This is the crazy part. You're, you're right. And you have everybody already tell you you're wrong. That's just very frustrating. So there's something about meeting someone else like, oh my God, I'm not the only one. I am not the only one. It's just, it's, it's euphoric. It's beautiful. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ayatollah Sayyid Yusuf Tabatabai Nejad. Now he is a Why Friday they prayer layer. Why such long names for themselves? Long yeah. names, stupid fatwas. It's a way for us to know exactly, to hone in. Oh, you don't, you don't exactly know what his name is because he's got so many layers in there. <laughs> <laughs> he's hiding behind. <laughs> he's hiding behind all his uh, titles. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's uh, done a fatwa, an insane fatwa, about... Uh, Friday prayers and how important they are. Well, not about rivers. A woman are responsible for uh, rivers being dried. He 
I think is, that's one of his old fatwas. That's, okay, that's uh, There are so many insane fatwas, we, we don't know where to start. So but this we're is focusing about, on this So this is, this is on what? Friday prayers and how important it is, how it's more important than any Eid or any Islamic holiday. And even the great Ayatollah Khomeini, from his perspective, from our perspective, uh, said that nothing matters. If there's Friday prayers in Iran, all else will be... Uh, be fine. Great and fine. Well, and that's what it is. It's great now. Everything is it's, it's, it's marvelous just, in Iran, isn't it? It's in it's in no the bizarre world, <laughs> there's no world. problem now, is there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all of this flowery language, and after we hear about how important it is, blah blah blah, yada yada yada, the threat comes in, which says that if you haven't gone to Friday prayers uh, because of your lack of concern for three weeks, I don't know where he got the three weeks from, but it's it is made up. <laughs> they make it up as they go along. Then the house will be demolished on your head. Must be. Must, Must be. be demolished. Must be. Well, it's very interesting. In the Threats. same sort of speech, he said, um, if you have respect for the Friday prayer the leader... Mm -hmm. Himself. And that's, that's me. <clears throat> yeah. and, and the innocent and infallible, that's him. That's him. <laughs> and his lot. And that's because they, they're absolutely fine, because they have a relation with God and mm. Almighty. They've got like a one direct line to God. Hmm. But if you respect humans and humanity, that's the worst thing that could happen to anybody. Can you imagine? Mm. Pure, pure insanity. Writers is an association that's been established for several years now in Afghanistan. It has published the writings of 140 women so far. And they started a small three of them got together and they started the campaign. And the writing is about the experience of women in Afghanistan, how they suffer under the way they've been treated. So the stories, the poem, and the, the published reflects that from the, with their own language. And they say, try to take that to to outside to every uh, body in the streets and try to discuss the issues and open up the discussion mm. in society. And it's amazing to watch because they've got their scenes where they're distributing a leaflet they've written against women's harassment on the street and they're handing it out to men and explaining uh, why they're campaigning for an end to uh, women's harassment on the street. And also they've got a campaign uh, for girls to go to school. It says, let me go to school. It's just wonderful watching their brave work, really. Absolutely. The new generation of women and in Afghanistan is the force that will change that society for the better. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators it's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. 
Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.